Hi, Angie here from Crafts at Home. Welcome back to this video series where I'm going to be featuring the art of quilting from Hashep Artworks. Hopefully you'll have completed up to issue 29 and have everything stored flat ready for joining in later issues. With this issue we'll be making the churn dash square block again and you'll be receiving the red flower, daisy, blossom and lime gingham fabrics. Before you begin, iron all of your fabric so it's nice and flat. It'll make it easier to work with and improve the overall finish of your quilt. As the blocks continue to increase in difficulty, it's important to read through the instructions. Make sure your cutting layouts are correct and take notice if you need to flip a template over for multiple pieces. Let's start marking and cutting. So according to the layouts now, I've marked all my templates on the four pieces of fabric that I've got here. We're just going to cut the red out at the moment. So I'm going to take my ruler and just line it up along the line that I've marked already. Take my guard off and then just a nice long stroke. Now on any of these fabrics this week we don't need to keep anything so I'll be putting all the spare scraps into my drawer. Might work towards a stitch saver or I might need to use the larger scraps if I make any mistakes in future issues. So I'm just continuing to cut these, put my scraps to the side. I'm just going to do a diagonal now to turn this into two triangles. And I'm actually going to line these up really carefully so I can trim off the ends. Any of the smaller scraps I do put straight into the bin. It's just the larger ones that I do keep. So all the small triangles, they go straight into the bin. Um, as well as any really smaller ones. Again, I'll line these up really carefully. So I can trim the points off. And there we go. I'm going to carry on now with these other three fabrics and I'll see you in a moment. So as you can see I've put all of the fabric down now where it lays out in its final block. The one thing that you need to do, which you do in step one, is for each one of these green lime gingham ones you need to mark along the two short edges and along one of the long edges just six millimeters in or quarter of an inch just so you've got your right lines if you've already done the previous churn square blocks you'll already be familiar with what we need to do so I'm just going to pop that back into there and for now I'm going to remove the red daisy and the blossom. We'll be using those again later. So to start with you need to fold over one of the lime green gingham on top of the red flower. If you match it up you will find that the edges, the corners don't quite match all the way but you just need to line it up as best as you can evenly in the middle and making sure that you've got your edge nice and sharp and you're not pulling because you are working on bias edges again so just pop a pin through the one
And there we go, that's ready now to go over to the sewing machine and I'll see you there in a moment. So here we are. As you can see, we've got our markings on our green gingham and we're going to sew from where our pencil line intersects there with a few stitches and then go forward to where it goes here with again some more stitches just to put it straight. So to start with I'm going to raise my needle and pop it in where the intersection of those lines are. If you want to take care and double check you can look, if you look straight up this line first you can see that the needle goes straight through and then you can twist your fabric around and look up that line there and you can see that the needle is straight up that line as well. So for the reinforcement stitches, it's the same as any others we've done. So you can go forward, three, four or five, depending on which you want. And I've got my reverse button just up here. So I'm gonna go back the same number of stitches as I came forward. I'm gonna take my first pin out. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom. And stop just before that pin and take that out. And then sew in still down on the line. We're going to go to where that intersects. So again we can do as we did before, lift our foot and see that the needle runs up on that line still, turn around and you can see it's exactly on that line so it's right on that point. So we want to do the same and go back stitches and then forward again. So having done that, we raise our needle up, take our material out and you want to trim it quite close to the fabric on each side. Then I'm also going to trim the beginning as well. We've got those reinforcement stitches in so there's no problems with anything coming unravelled. So as you can see, we've got it starting at the intersection there, running on and finishing at the intersection there. So I'll see you over at the ironing board in a moment where I'm going to show you how to pin the next piece on. So once you've done your first line of stitching and secured both edges, you'll have something that looks like this. So next, we're going to pop the next piece on. So the easiest way is I like to hold it up so it matches mirror image the one you just sewn on. And then you turn 90 degree angles clockwise and you'll get it along that top line. So the first thing you want to do is fold that one out without ironing and then match this one up. You want to get it so where that intersection crosses, which is where you will start, is along the same line here. So the way I do it to make sure it's in place is I just put a pin straight through the intersection, straight through the ironing board. Then I gently lift up my top piece, still keeping the pin in and you can see where it is on your bottom piece. So I'm now going to just take that across to where it needs to be. Swivel that back round, push it down and make sure that I'm still on the seam line which I've gone up a little bit. So I'm going to take it down 
double check it all again, lift it up and it is where I want it to be. So the next thing to do, I lift my fabric up and pop a pin through and then I do the same on this side. And there we are. With regards to the sewing, we want to do exactly the same we did on that seam. So we start at the intersection, put some reinforcement stitches in, stitch all the way down to where the cross is here, and put some stitches in there as well. You then want to continue for the other two pieces. So I'm going to go put on these next three pieces and I'll see you in a moment. So I've now added all four of the green lime gingham. And our next stage is to add the yellow blossom. So if you pop that in, you'll actually see the block starting to come together. But we want to do the inset seams. So the first thing we need to do is attach it onto the wings here. So just simply fold it over, again right side to right side, and then pin in. So you want to make sure that your edges are matching and you go down towards the middle. Now because we've already got our lines marked on the line green, that's where I'm going to be pinning. So that's the first one pinned in. We want to do exactly the same here. So just turn it over, match those edges, twist round and pin. So we're just going to repeat for these now. When it comes to actually sewing it, I change my direction with this a little bit and I always go from this end to the middle because you can still see where you're sewing on the end but then when it comes to this piece here you can just make sure that all of your fabric is out of the way, nothing's folded over and it's just a straight edge to do your reinforcement stitches where it meets the other one. If you did do it the other way from the middle out then it is more difficult to move all of the fabric edges out of the way to put it underneath your presser foot to then sew. So that way I can stop just before all of these and move everything out of the way before meeting up with the other line that we've just sewn and then going back and doing the reinforcement stitches. So now I've got all four of those pinned in, I'm just going to pop and sew them. So I've now gone and sewn from the edge to the middle on all four. So we now need to start to attach the blossom on this side to that side to make the square. So if we push that one out of the way for now and work just on this edge. So if you take your loose corner of your blossom, take it back Fold that piece in and then over. It will match up to this piece quite nicely. So all you need to do is make sure that your edges are aligned, your fabric's nice and flat and nothing's turned over there. So I'm just going to pin this together now once in the centre and then once at the end. So 
you want to repeat those for all four and also when it comes to sewing I do exactly the same again so I start from the outside work my way in and then do some reinforcement stitches at that join so I'm just going to pin the rest of these now so again fold all of the fabric back in the corner and just have everything neatly lined up you're going to be sewing along that line that we've just drawn on so make sure you have that facing up and that's also the side that I pin on so my pins are in the right position so again go on to do the other one make sure that everything is out of the way that seam lines up nicely and then pop a pin through And take that out because it's ruffled slightly at the bottom before repinning. There we go, and we just want to repeat with the last one. So just make sure that everything's nice and flat. All of your excess pieces of fabric are facing the opposite way to where you're sewing. Your seams are nicely lined up. And then just pop a pin through. And there we go, you end up with it looking a little bit like a bowl, but it will all flatten out and iron nicely with the next step. So I'm just going to go and sew all four of these edges and I'll see you back here in a moment. So now that we've finished sewing in the blossom triangles, we'll get something that looks a little bit like this. So we're going to iron it all now so it's nice and flat for adding the next things on. And the first thing you want to do is take the toe of your iron and just take the blossom and iron it over the lime gingham. So we'll do that for all four. You might need to give it just a little bit of a steam just to try and get it nice and flat so try and make sure that all of your seams are actually nice and sharp and pulled at the same time there we are and then you actually want to iron the red square out so just start on an edge and then just slowly press down to the point where you can then get your whole iron over the square and there we go So then you can turn your square back over, just double check that everything, you've got your nice sharp edges everywhere and it's all nice and flat. The next stage is to bring in the triangles again and then if you place your square so you've got it in front of you and then start to look at the way that your triangles go. So if there's any obvious upright ones, 
try and place them so it's all facing the right way. I'm quite happy with that. So then you fold them in and pin them on. I'm actually going to pin this way round just so I can make sure that when I'm sewing all of the seams will lie nice and flat as they're going through my sewing machine. I'm just going to sew this up in a moment. Let's pop a pin through there and then I'll actually pin on the opposite side as well. So we'll pin this side on. I'm keeping those two triangles in place so I know where they go when I'm done. And then again, pin in the middle. And pin on the end. Just take care because again we are working with bias edges so we don't want to stretch the material out to shape. So I'm just going to go and sew these two seams and I'll be back in a moment. So I've now sewn these two triangles on here and we're just going to press them And then iron them open. So you want to have your triangles on the bottom and then everything else on the top. So you press the triangles towards the centre. Flip it over and then do the same. So because I've left these two in place, I can also see which way round. So I've got these at the bottom and facing up to the top. And then you just want to pin the remaining two triangles on. So do exactly the same thing as before where you've got the triangles on the bottom and everything else on the top so when you come to sew everything's still lying nice and flat I'm just going to pin together the edges And then I'll do the same on the other side. So turn it over and pin again. There we are. So I'm just going to sew these final edges and I'll be back in a moment. So we've got the last two seams now sewn for this block. We're just going to press them down just to set the seam before ironing open. And you want to have it again with the triangles on the bottom and everything else on the top. And then iron the triangles open. You have got a thick seam at each edge so you do just want to be careful of that as you're sewing it 
and making sure that it lies nice and flat. And do the same on the other edge. You might need some steam just to make sure that it does lie smooth and flat. And then give the whole block an iron. And there we go, that is our finished block. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll have enjoyed this video and the churn dash square block that we've created. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of our new videos. Further information about Crafts at Home, the Crafts at Home forum, the art of quilting and hash shape artworks can be found in the social media pages which are listed in the description. Don't forget to join us next week for issue 31. We will be sashing and joining blocks together again. Bye for now.